Welcome to Browns All Access with Hugh Jackson. Nathan Zagura, very happy to be back alongside Bernie Kozar and Bernie the Browns with a huge win over the Ravens, 12 to nine, another overtime thriller, but this team coming together at two, two and one. Absolutely, and I think to see the genuine raw emotion, not just of the players, but the coaches and Coach Jackson in particular, after beating the Ravens and getting that win within the division. What a difference a few weeks makes. And Browns fans, you have reason to be excited, and part of that is because your rookies on both sides of the ball are playing at a high level at critical positions. Baker Mayfield, your quarterback, Denzel Ward, your quarterback, both huge against the Ravens. And let's look at some of the things they did well on Sunday in the Papa John's Play Breakdown. All right, Coach, obviously huge win against the Ravens, and your rookies continue to show up for you every single week. Let's start with Denzel Ward. Sometimes when you bend but don't break, the bending part's okay, but you have to not break it. Denzel Ward cleans it up for you here with a big interception. No, you said it. Our young class has done a really good job of making plays. You know, obviously Denzel has been at the point of a lot of turnovers for us, and I think that's really important. As you see here, he makes a tremendous break on the ball. He's doing his job. We're in a cover two a soft cover two zone. He turned this guy over to the safety and now he's really playing the flat and he's looking at the, the release of the tight end and you can see he's playing him all the way. Now here comes the ball and he jumps it and he's able to make the play but it all starts with Emmanuel Agba as you can see right here getting his hands up, deflecting the ball, giving Denzel a chance to make a break on it. We did a really good job in this instance one of doing what we preach which is to our defensive line get your hands up Two, which is Denzel using his eyes, seeing where the ball could go, and then reacting and making a play. So you had a couple big plays driving down the field, some nice throws to David. You get here at the 19-yard line. What were you guys hoping to get with this play? Well, obviously, when you get in certain areas of the field, defenses normally only play a few coverages, uh, a few different coverages, I should say, and a few different fronts. So we were hoping to get a single high zone or a two-shell zone uh, every play we have has the possibility of throwing it in the end zone or checking it down. And so Baker was able here in this situation to recognize exactly what we we're trying to do. We got David up on the safety. You'll see as David came, comes around, he comes up on, on Jefferson and he's able to sit down while Rashard Higgins is able to work the corner on the outside. So it creates a high low over there on that side. So we're able to get this ball up over the top of the safety before the backside safety can get there. But the thing that made it all work is Baker did a great job of standing in there under duress. He's getting hit as his ball's thrown and able to throw the ball to a spot and have our receiver get there and it's a touchdown. I mean, you got to love that. Standing in the pocket, yeah. staring it down, knowing he's going to get killed, delivering it, and a big touchdown. Absolutely. What did you think of the, the red carpet Hollywood touchdown celebration? I think they can do a little better than that. A little bit better than that. A little okay. bit better. I expect right. a little more from uh, our guys. went black tie for it. <laughs> all right, very good, Coach. <laughs> And how about those rookies? In addition to winning the AFC Special Teams Player of the Week Award, Denzel Ward has now won the Rookie of the Week Award for the second time, and Browns rookies have won that now four out of the first five weeks in the NFL season. Now, Bernie, these rookies have been very impressive, but what I like from Baker Mayfield, end of the first half, two-minute drill, touchdown. End of regulation, gets them an opportunity for a field goal, and then when you needed it at the end of the game, drives them down for that game-winning field goal. What does that say to you about this rookie? Well, I think there's no question what it says is his ability to be able to play like he's not a rookie right now. He's playing like a seasoned veteran, and it just hasn't been uh, the, this past game. Starting off against the Jets, coming in in a tough situation at the end of the second quarter, just getting those three points on the board, going into halftime, giving that little bit of adrenaline. But that little bit of adrenaline that we saw against the Jets game keeps building, keeps growing, and the excitement, the expectation um, of success, of expected success, not just of us fans, more importantly, of the players and coaches. They believe they could win. Absolutely. Talk about the momentum. He had Baker lead him down for a touchdown. Denzel lay out like Superman for that blocked field goal, and the Browns were off and running. You can say Baker mania is running wild here, and we'll be back with more Browns All Access with Hugh Jackson right after this. After the break, rookie kicker Greg Joseph takes us through his journey to the NFL and Joe Schobert sits down with Andrew Gribble to recap the first five games of the 2018 season.
Welcome back to Browns All Access with Hugh Jackson, Nathan Zagura, alongside Bernie Kozar. And Bernie, the special teams have not really been special early in the season, but played a huge role in this win over the Ravens. We've talked about Denzel Ward's blocked field goal, but Greg Joseph with the game winner. And having a new kicker come in midseason can be tough at times for that battery. How do you make that adjustment? Well, I think from the timing standpoint from the overall special teams, you're right, we, we haven't had, uh, special teams has been a big topic of discussion the first part of the season. In the last game against the Ravens, some really clutch big time plays like the, uh, like the made field goal to win the game. Um, I think from a perspective of the holder, snapper, and kicker, obviously from the timing perspective, it's an issue that they need to work out. But from the overall team perspective, guys need to basically do their job. Concentrate on your own job, and the other guys will take care of itself. Absolutely. Well, you needed that kick to go through, and it wasn't pretty, but it did. And there are no pictures on the scorecard, folks. Now let's talk to the kicker who made that win possible. Greg Joseph in our Player Spotlight brought to you by Fifth Third. So I played soccer my, my whole life, up until literally right before summer workouts started for FAU. You know, I was playing my last tournament with my guys, you know, my, my team. You know, just started at a young age. Uh, you know, I was in South Africa with a bunch of school friends, and we all, we all played every sport, you know, uh, soccer, cricket, rugby, the big sports over there. So, uh, you know, just got into, into it, got involved, and, you know, just kind of fell in love with soccer. Um, kind of idolized David Beckham after the first time watching him. So I had every jersey I would you know, run around pretending I was Beckham, the hairstyle and all. So I moved here when I was seven, so, you know, I was getting competitive in soccer then. But I remember third grade, we went to our cousin's house, you know, he kind of hosted a Super Bowl party. And I'm like, oh, what's, what's that? You know, I kind of didn't know. It got explained to me and, um, you know, I'm competitive and you fall in love with it because then I just noticed how athletic these guys are, you know, and obviously I noticed the kicking part of it because I played with my feet my whole life. When I actually made the switch was probably somewhere in my senior year. I played played both in high school. You know, I'd uh, go to football practice, warm up, kick a little bit, and then take my pads off, run over to soccer practice. You know, uh, loved it. Uh, but then I realized how far football can take you. You know, and the opportunities that it presents in this country. So you know, went with it, made a made a decision right there, and you know, decided to stick with what I know. Stayed home, walked on to FAU, and you know, trusted my gut. Haven't looked back since. You know, don't regret one thing about it. After I got released by Miami, I got this call. I was uh, talking to you know a couple of the up above's here, and uh, you know then they told me I'd be flying out that night, so I you know had to run home real quick, grab some stuff, threw it in a bag. You know I was here. My flight was at 9:04. I was here by you know by midnight. You know the tryout was the next morning. Um, felt like I did well there. Showed what I could do, and yeah. And then you know luck luckily enough they came, pulled pulled me apart, and uh, you know told me that you know they were going to sign me. And at that moment, you know it hadn't really hit yet. You know, it hit me a couple couple hours later because everything goes so fast when that happens. But uh, that was probably for the better, actually, because it was just a quick turnaround, no time to think. Game on Thursday, you know, kick once, game on Thursday. It was awesome. The, the energy in the stadium was awesome. Uh, definitely a feeling I'll remember for the, for the rest of my life and something no one can ever take away from me. And here comes new kicker Greg Joseph. Snap is back, ball down, the kick is up, and the kick is good. He's got it. Good for him. And he's announcing his uh, candidacy for mayor next uh, week. The fans are awesome. They've been awesome. Everyone's been really receptive. And, you know, I'm just going to keep doing what I'm doing and hope, you know, uh, they stay behind me. So for, as far as the cheering, you know, it was awesome. It was funny. The first one caught me off guard. I was like, you know, I checked to see if, you know, Jarvis had a one-handed catch or something. Then it happened the second kick and Britton started laughing and he's like, hey, just have fun with it. You know, they're, they're doing that for you. Just have fun with it. I'm happy to be, you know, doing what I'm doing and I want to keep going in that fashion, obviously. I'm going to do everything I can to, you know, work harder and get better and keep putting points on the board because at the end of the day, that's what it's about. The spot is at the 27. It's a 37-yard field goal for Greg Joseph. Colquitt asks him, are you ready? This is to win it. Snap is back, ball down, the kick on the way, line drive, the kick is good! With two seconds left in overtime, the Browns have won it!
What's up? I'm Allie Raymond, and this is your Social Minute, where we show you the best, the best of what happened on social media this week. Starting with our friend, the Rally Possum, who made another appearance at our game last Sunday. He was spotted early Sunday morning outside the gates at First Energy Stadium, and we're so glad he showed up again because we needed him. Our other friend, Greg Pleasant, aka the Rally Possum Wrangler, also came to the game and served as our Dog Pound captain, where he rallied the crowd to get them excited to lead us to another Browns win. Possum Frenzy has hit an all-time high. You can even go to the Browns Pro Shop and pick up your own stuffed possum. And speaking of animals, Mr. Dog, aka Snoop Dogg, was here in Berea to visit with the team on Wednesday. Snoop rolled up unannounced to visit with the Browns players and even got to see a little bit of practice, meet some of the guys, and see some old friends. Lastly, the Browns released a compilation video of some of your best reactions to our game-winning field goal against the Ravens. <laughs> Keep sending in your videos and we'll keep posting them. And make sure to stay tuned to all of our Brown social media channels. I'm Allie Raymond, and this has been your Social Minute. Coming up next, head coach Hugh Jackson previews the matchup between the Browns and the Chargers. And Joe Schober talks about the emphasis on creating turnovers this season. Steps, fires, has picked off! They Schobert. got it! Joe Schober got it! Welcome back to Browns All Access with Hugh Jackson, Nathan Zagura alongside Browns legend Bernie Kozar. And Bernie, last year Joe Schobert stepped into that middle linebacker position as a relative unknown. Well, fast forward a year, he's already been to a Pro Bowl, been one of the top tacklers of the league, and has really settled in as the quarterback of this defense for Greg Williams. What do you think of what Schobert's done so far early in 2018? No question, Joe's had an amazing last 18 months. And for him to go almost from a relative unknown to the Mr. Fixit of our defense, the captain, the leader, the play caller of the defensive staff, you could see guys listen to Joe, guys respect him, and the ability to take what is somewhat of a complex defense and simplify it so that all 11 guys are on the same page is very impressive. Yeah, you got to give Joe and Greg Williams and really that whole defense a lot of credit for what they did against the Ravens, snapping a 13-game streak where the Ravens had scored at least 20 points in 13 straight. That was the longest streak in the NFL. Now, what makes Joe Schobert tick, you might ask? Well, you're going to find out right now in our exclusive one-on-one -on -one interview with Sir Andrew Gribble. I'm Andrew Gribble and I'm here with Browns linebacker Joe Schobert and Joe. It's been a wild five weeks, but you guys sit here two, two and one. How do you sum it up from, from your perspective? I think a lot of guys are happy that we've won two games so far, but there's a feeling that we should have three, four, five victories under our belt at this time too. So a lot of stuff to improve on, a lot of work to be done, but we're just taking steps in the right direction. Yeah, it seems like the defense, though, has had a big role in a lot of these games, and, and this past week's especially against Baltimore. What is it about this defense that is so different from the previous two years you've been a part of it? Uh, we're getting takeaways. Uh, we've emphasized getting takeaways, getting turnovers, um, forcing them from other teams the first three years I've been here, but I think this last offseason we really put it into practice. Yeah, let's get a takeaway, force fumble. He got out to the 40, to the 42, and he fumbled, and the Browns are on it! Let's go! Let's go, Ravens! Go, Ravens! Let's go! Let's go! Kirko, 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 right here! When your defense plays the way it did this past week, and you saw what the offense did in week four, what, what is the thinking when you guys can all both get on the same page and, and how this team can progress moving forward? Yeah, I mean, it's exciting. It definitely has a different feeling than what it's been since I've been here. Um, if we can all put it together and make uh, have one complete game, there's no telling how far we can go. Um, I think we're in good, a good spot for our division right now. So if we can keep stacking them, uh, chips on top of each other and taking steps in the right direction, I think we'll be looking pretty at the end of the year. Right, 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 right. They quick counted that one. What? They quick counted that third down. Hey, are we good? Hey, E-Man, a little, little bit, a little bit. Good? 
In just three years, Joe, you kind of established yourself as a team leader and as that Mike linebacker, you've got to be really vocal. How, how much have you taken that on your shoulders and, and really kind of embraced that leadership role? Yeah, that was probably the biggest change going from outside linebacker and moving into the mic is making all the calls, setting the fronts and making all the checks. It's a lot of fun, when you, especially when you do it right and you make it a negative or no game play or a big play with an interception or forced fumble. So um, that's probably been one of the more fun aspects of playing the mic linebacker and I've really enjoyed it. Three games already in the books at home. You guys are undefeated 2-0-1. Uh, what kind of home field advantage have you guys established, especially for the defense? I think it's a place that we've tried to make where other teams come in and they're scared to try to take shots down the field, to hold on to the ball too long as a, at, at the quarterback position, uh, and try to force quick throws because of how we're getting after the quarterback and how we're playing the ball when it's in the air. Um, so I think we've definitely established that um, mindset and mentality to affect other teams as they're coming in here. Um, and we'll just see how we can keep building on it going forward. Now the Browns shut down what had been the second highest scoring offense in the NFL going back to the middle of last season in the Ravens, but it doesn't get any easier this week against the Chargers. Phillip Rivers completing over 70% of his passes. Another tough test for this team. What must they do defensively this week? I'm a master fan of Phillip Rivers going back to his high school days when he and Mark Chessman were recruiting him to go to North Carolina State. So to be able to understand and see his, his ability to really be a surgeon out there is, is incredibly impressive. Over more than a decade, gives our defense on the surface a, a tough task. That being said, because Phillip is in the pocket a lot and our defensive line with the ability to get four guys rushing the quarterback, dropping seven in coverage, if we're able to collapse that pocket, it could be a tough day for Phillip Rivers. Yeah, you're going to have to pressure him. We saw Larry Joby with seven more pressures this week. Garrett got to the quarterback another sec. Jannard Avery had four pressures, as did Emmanuel Agba. So that front four has got to get the job done to make things easy on the back end against a guy like Phillip Rivers. We'll be back with more Browns All Access right after this. In honor of Joe Thomas Day at the stadium, we have a Joe Thomas themed trivia question for you this week. And the question is, during his freshman year at the University of Wisconsin, at which position did Joe play the majority of his snaps? Is the answer A, offensive guard, B, offensive tackle, C, tight end, or D, defensive end? Find out the answer when Browns All Access returns. At what position did Joe Thomas play the majority of his snaps during his freshman year at the University of Wisconsin? The answer is C, tight end. During the 2003 season, Joe mostly saw action as a blocking tight end and was the first true freshman offensive lineman to see any action during the Barry Alvarez era. However, his only start his freshman year came on the other side of the ball where he assisted on seven tackles from the defensive end position when the Badgers took on the Auburn Tigers in the Music City Bowl. Welcome back to Browns All Access with Hugh Jackson, Nathan Zagura, alongside Bernie Kozar and Bernie. We talked earlier about Phillip Rivers and what makes him so tough to defend, but this team doesn't just rely on the pass. They've got a great running back in Melvin Gordon, so they can do it all offensively. Yeah, that's, I think, the key to their success. The, the old school guys love to have that equal balance of run and pass, that 50-50 blend and when you have a running back like Melvin Gordon who's experienced and productive to go along with an experienced precision surgeon like Phillip Rivers it's definitely good for an offensive football team. Yeah you look at this Chargers team three and two on the season their only losses have come to the undefeated Chiefs and the undefeated Rams so this will be a big test and to learn more about this game I sat down with Browns head coach Hugh Jackson. Coach, coming off the big division win, but you always talk about wanting to stack wins, and you mm -hmm. get that opportunity here against a very good Chargers team. Oh, there's no question. I mean, this is a really good football team coming in here. Uh, we understand that. It's another AFC opponent with a really good quarterback. It doesn't change for us, so we, we respect that. But at the same time, if we're going to become the team that we want to become, these are the games we need to win. You know, it's at home, in front of our fans, in front of the dog pound. 
Uh, again, we want all of our fans to be there early because we need them in this football game. We need their energy. Uh, but we respect that this is a good team coming into our building. Flipping it around, seems like good news. No Joey Bosa, he's still been out, but Melvin Ingram up front, one of the more disruptive pass rushers in the game. You know, I think their defense is going to end up being one of the better defenses we've played. You know, they do a really good job. You just mentioned Melvin Ingram and Hayward and, and uh, Perryman. I mean, and the new young player, Darwin James. I mean, there's a lot of good players on their defensive football team. Uh, it's a challenge for us. We need to continue to get better on offense, continue to move forward. You know, this is going to be Baker's second start, you know, here at home. Uh, we need to play better. What would this one mean to get this win over this Chargers team? It just means that we're trending in the right direction, you know, just like last week's game, which was huge. We needed a division win, you know, within our division against Baltimore. I thought that we got that monkey off our back. Now we need to, to win a game after winning a game. You know, we need to start stacking these wins. You know, we have goals and aspirations, but there's nothing that we can talk about unless we keep – winning so we got to continue to stack wins together and keep moving forward thanks coach good luck on sunday thank you very much bernie huge opportunity on sunday if the browns win they go to three two and one which would be the best start for this franchise since 2001 so this is a big one no doubt about it when you have a chance to win a conference game on top of getting the monkey off our back last week and winning a division game to be able to start stacking wins, as Coach Jackson likes to tell us, is something imperative for this young football team. Yeah, you know what I thought was good against the Ravens is that the Browns know they could have played better, and yet they still won against a quality opponent. And I think that's why the mindset has changed here in Berea. Talked to a number of players this week, and they feel like they expect to win every time out there, and that has not been the case in my six years here with this team. Now, for the latest on your Cleveland Browns, download the Browns mobile app. Keep it tuned to clevelandbrowns.com. Subscribe to our YouTube channel, and of course, follow us all over social media. And for the latest on Bernie, be sure to check out kozar19.com. It's a big one. The Browns and the Chargers at First Energy Stadium this Sunday, and let's go Browns.